You might be surprised to hear that there's something sneaky hidden in plain sight within some brands of supermarket flour. But is that a good thing or a bad thing? And no, I'm not talking about protein content. Roll it. Hey, home bakers. Last week we spoke about how to make bread, but cheaper and the first thing that comes to mind is to swap out our flour right after all it is the biggest contributor to the recipe and so therefore responsible for the biggest fraction of the cost cheaper flour makes cheaper bread and the first time i did this the characteristics of the dough itself led me on a voyage of discovery where i commenced on an epic journey leading me to happen upon the greatest secret of mankind actually uh, I just read the back of the packet. That day has long since become a memory, but let's recreate that experience so we can discover this together. Cut to the table. Here we have two flowers, and I'm weighing them into these handsome pie dishes. The first, a mid-price brand, the one that I normally use, although the price has gone up like all things. The second tin, supermarket flour, my brand of choice, Sano's, to the core. Here, using my incredibly powerful senses of touch, taste and smell, I can already deduce that the hidden secret is, only joking, not even I can do that. At first glance, there isn't much difference. Aside from perhaps the color or the clumpiness, but come on, we're just splitting hairs, aren't we? Let's make two doughs as identically as possible, which when it comes to bread, is pretty much impossible. But I'll do my best to give it a go with the standard flour I use in my right hand, that's to the left of your screen, and the supermarket flour in my left hand, that's to the right of your screen. Yeast is in the bowl already. Water follows, and then flour and salt. I'll give each bowl a mix up like this with my Bake With Jack dough scraper, available to purchase at bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop, where there are lots of other lovely things to buy, like those pie tins you saw earlier, and loaf tins you'll see later on. Next, I'm adding olive oil and mixing that in two, and then out onto the table. One, two. Another peep here reveals not a lot really. They both look kind of similar messes, so let's get kneading. This is where I first start to notice a difference, and here's the first talking point. All flours are different. That's why it's hard to write recipes, and that's why successful long-term baking, at least in part, requires us to practice our craft again and again and build those all-important home baker's instincts. Strong white bread flour of one brand is always different to the next. You might have one that you like, and there'll be others that perform differently. So here, as I'm kneading, I'm beginning to sense that they are performing with a difference along the levels of what I would expect. As we continue on the kneading process, I'm beginning to feel the right dough, that's the supermarket flour, coming together, getting silky and smoother sooner than the branded flour. I'll continue on for the rest, but so far it sounds like that's an advantage, doesn't it? A flour that comes together quicker? Regardless, I do my eight minutes because then I can rest up safe in the knowledge that I've done my very best and also because that's how I've conditioned myself. <laughs> At the end of kneading, I'm shaping them both into a smooth, tight ball, ready for the first rest. And it's here that I'm beginning to feel that something is up, something is going on here. I try to illustrate the difference here in the two doughs by squeezing them, pressing them. I don't know if you can see the difference, but I can feel the difference visually. The supermarket dough is lighter in color, more refined, more processed, perhaps flour, I don't know. Less character in the grain is what I'm trying to say, I suppose, but by touch, it has bounce. Not just bounce, but bounce above and beyond anything I experienced before. A rubberiness, a resistance to my squashing and my squeezing that led me to investigate further. It's interesting how you all see flour as flour. Aside from the fact that there's vitamins and minerals added from some law made up in 1941 that we still do, is that weird? I don't know. We all think flour is flour, ground wheat. Sift the white bit, sift the brown bit. I've even had conversations with people who think gluten-free flour is flour without the gluten, like it's wheat flour, the gluten taken out. It's free from gluten. After all, it is in the free from aisle in the supermarket, right? But read it, it's rice, tapioca, a potato starch and xanthan gum and stuff like that. This flour is not just flour. It is flour, ground wheat, sifted, but it has additional wheat gluten. It's right here in the ingredients on the back of the packet. It says wheat flour, Wheat flour, calcium carbonate, niacin, theamine, iron, whatever, those vitamins and minerals, 
and wheat gluten. They put it in. It is an additional ingredient. And what does that mean for us as home bakers? That means our dough is rubbery, er, uh, springy, er, uh, strong, er. Uh. And we'll see the result in the bread itself at the end of the video. Why do they do it this way? I don't know. Doesn't flour already contain gluten or more accurately, the stuff required to make gluten when moisture is added? Yes. But if I was to hazard a guess, then perhaps in keeping costs low, they use one standard flour for everything and then add the bits and bobs needed for it to fulfill its purpose. Grind the wheat, sift out the white bit, and on its own, plain flour. Add raising agents to it, and now it's self-raising flour. Pop in a bit of gluten, strong white bread flour. I'm trying to think of ways here that I would make it cheap. After all, we can't add ground chalk like they used to do in the olden days, right? And there's no mention of that on the back of the packet. Let's imagine that gluten is added here to turn plain flour into strong white bread flour, because that's what I would do. The question is how much and how much is too much. That choice is up to you because you're the one making and eating the bread. And if you like it, if it's the best loaf you've ever enjoyed making and eating, well then they got it spot on then, didn't they? Side note before we get into the bread part of this video, there's a lot of talk out there about protein content with the thought that the more protein present in the flour, the more gluten is developed, or perhaps in this case, it's the other way round. Ah, do I really want to open this door about protein content? Probably not, because I don't really care. But the, for those of you that do, I'll do this for you. The supermarket plain flour clocks in at 9.7 grams of protein per 100 grams. The supermarket bread flour with the protein added comes out 13.4 grams of protein and that branded flour that I'm using, only 12. Back to me in the kitchen over there. So I popped the dough in the bowl, covered it and rested it for one hour. And after that time, casually sauntered back to the dough, coffee in hand, to see what's going on. And what is going on? Well, they puffed up, didn't they? Both doughs puffed nicely. And we can go to town comparing the two for minute inconsistencies, but really it's too small to come to any kind of conclusion. We are in danger here of looking too deep and that's pointless. In moments like these, I think to myself, if I just had one and the other one wasn't present, would I be looking so close? No, they both puffed up, of course they will. Great, they're good to go. Free shaping time and this is always pleasing to watch, is it not? I turn the both out of the bowl press down on my knuckles and then work my way around folding it into a tight ball. After repeating as much of exactly the same thing as possible with the other dough, I then give them both a nice roll to tighten them up nicely. Now we're covered with a cloth and a 15 minute rest ready for the final shape. After 15 minute rest, I'm really clutching at straws here. And this is why you don't see me make comparison videos like this. And this is worth a talking point, I think. I never look this close at stuff as what I am doing here in this clip. There are many, many factors involved in the differences between these two doughs. Like I said at the beginning, it's pretty much impossible to make two doughs exactly the same. And this is why I don't often make videos like this, comparing two different things. This one, because I'm making two doughs at exactly the same time and doing what I need to do to them at exactly the same time, it kind of makes sense that I can cast an accurate comparison. But there becomes a point where you're looking too small at things, where stuff is so, so minute, it could be caused by a lot of different things. And realistically, what difference does it make to our bread? Not a lot. But it is at this stage that we begin to see something with our eyeballs that might just illustrate the point I'm trying to make. It's very, very slight. But look, as I flip each piece of dough over, starting with the brand flour, the supermarket flour dough, that's the right one on your screen, is very slightly plumper than the other one. I told you it was slight. I moved the camera so you can see it from the front. The bran flour is spreading out further and the supermarket flour holding a more plump shape on the table. In shaping them both, the supermarket dough feels much tighter, much more bouncy. I tried to do exactly the same thing with both, but let's face it, partially I'm led subconsciously by feel by those bread makers instincts, you know? Into the tin without the pre-puff slash like I normally do. I don't know why I did that on this occasion. Uh, I didn't really think about it, but hey, I digress. And left to rest. An hour later, let's take a look. It's clear, isn't it, that the supermarket flour puffed up more in the same time, right? That's not to say it was faster probably, but perhaps the stronger dough kept more of the air in during the shape and pre-shape to enable it to get a head start on the other one. Because I didn't do the pre-puff slash, I'm gonna score it here with a grignette before baking. And here they are 
out of the oven. Just look at the difference. By now, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, what was the point of this video again? I was thinking that too. And then I remembered. The first time I did this, there wasn't two loaves. There was no side-by-side -side comparison. When I baked these loaves together, I baked them at the same time because I was baking two loaves. It was habitual. Despite the fact that the branded flour loaf was approaching its peak puff, and the supermarket flour loaf wasn't. The first time I did this, and we will compare them later, I had just the one loaf. I felt the surface when it was about time to bake and it still had bounce. I thought to myself, hold on a minute, this still feels tight after an hour resting in its tin. It's bouncy, it's firm, and it hasn't quite reached its peak yet. And I let it go further and it went. It grew and it grew and it grew. Massive, hugely way beyond the other loaf would have been capable of. And this is where dough number three comes in. This supermarket flour loaf was a repeat of the first as exact as I could have done it and just watch it puff up. This time I let it puff way longer and it kept on growing until eventually it became delicate and I baked it. Then in the oven, it went a little bit further. I didn't slash this one because I took it as close to its peak as it could. It would have been too delicate. I probably would have collapsed and lost it. Just look at this monster. It stands to reason that this larger in size loaf made with the same amount of dough would make for lighter bread, right? And that is the game we play, isn't it? We don't want a brick, but is lighter always better? Where's the line? Is there such a thing as too light? Side by side, these three loaves are quite clearly illustrate triumphant homemaking in their own way. The branded flour loaf sliced is firm, tasty, characterful, fresh bread. It's delicious, of course it is. The supermarket comparison when sliced is very slightly finer crumb texture, bouncier, chewier. Prompts my wife to say something like, did you buy this? It's delicious bread, of course it is. It's homemade, but it does veer towards that that you do buy in a supermarket. And the third, well, just look. It is so light and so fluffy that actually it's quite difficult to slice in the way I imagine mass-produced modern bread to be. I can't imagine how they do that. It's so floppy and so soft that a sandwich would likely break up in my hands on the way to my face. But hey, it's fresh bread and it's as tasty as I would expect. Practical though? Probably not so much. So what's the point of this video? Uh, I don't know. To expose budget flowers and the criminals that make it for the disgrace they truly are? Uh, not really. To show that amazing homemade bread is achievable with any flour, regardless of your budget? Well, it's not the point, but it's a nice bonus. Making bread with supermarket flour took me by surprise, and my wife and kids' fleeting preference for the loaf that they thought I didn't make Firstly, made me want to shake my fist in anger, but then encouraged me to ask the question, what do we all want out of this? For me, it's something that is a joy to make and a joy to eat, which all of these breads are, although I never made that sandwich in the end. It's also important to me that I and my family and the world are eating something as close to natural as possible, which is why I wince when stuff is added. Even if it's something that's already present in the flour, itself. I don't know why I feel that way, I just do. And so then comes the point, the pinnacle, the climax of this video and our journey together. If you like the kind of bread that supermarket flour makes, well then choose the flour with the additional wheat gluten. And if you don't, then don't. Thanks to all patrons, thanks to all people dropping super thanks, for super thanks is now enabled on this channel and you can do that if you want to. More to come, see you soon. Bye bye.